Hi guys, welcome to tonight's webinar, Teaching AS Music Technology, the coursework. Um, you'll be happy to know that Edexcel has just published the new specification, the portfolios for AS and A2. So if you head on over to the Edexcel Music Tech pages, you'll see it there. Um, at the end, during the q and I'll flick over to the pages and we'll have a little look at that. This um, webinar is mainly tailored for those that are starting out teaching music tech but there should hopefully be some nice pointers for anyone else that's um, around and just kind of wants to pick up some advice or whatever um, and hopefully during the Q&A session we'll um, bat around some ideas. That's what it is. Hold on, sorry. <laughs> Okay, sorry about that. I was monitoring my feed. That's a bit weird. Okay, let's start that again. Sorry about that. Right, moving on. So, teaching AS music technology coursework. The good thing about live shows is anything can go wrong. <laughs> Brilliant. Okay, so I'm Ken Cameron um, over here at musictechstudent.co.uk, and tonight we're just looking at the AS coursework. So first off we're going to start with task 1A, what to expect, how to deal with it. Next we're going to move on to task 1B and how I kind of deal with some of the issues there. Task 1C, the logbook, the most important questions, 9 and 10 to get you those extra 20 marks. And then finally the Q&A. Okay, so the coursework for AS, as is A2 as well, is made up of three tasks. Task A, task B and task C. In the AS specification, you've also got 20 marks for the logbook. So, A and C are all weighted at 40 marks each. A is a sequence realization, realized performance, and it's basically you creating or students creating a song that's given to you by Edexcel um, in the portfolio. This year is La La La, which hopefully is a good one. I haven't listened to it yet, but we'll we'll do that in a bit. Um, and you're going to have to recreate that to the absolute specification. So it has to sound almost identical to it, to the best abilities, only using MIDI editing. No audio involved in that one. Then we're going to look at task 1B, multi-track recording, and how I kind of deal with some of the things and maybe in my earlier and some of the pitfalls I come across. And then finally, task 1C, which is probably the most challenging one, and it's the one that most people don't leave enough time for. So task 1A. You're going to get given a score. Every year you get given this score and for the most part it's accurate, it's correct and there's some really good information that your students can take and copy into the sequencer. But it doesn't ha always have all the information. It's really, really important that your students listen to the track, listen to the song and try and identify extra parts. I tend to get my students in the early stages to import the mp3 or the WAV file bounce down from the CD into the sequencer and get them to quit, keep s switching between their mix and the actual song. That's really good reference. It's really important to reference because you're going to be able to identify the panning, you're going to be able to identify some of the mixing um, and any of the kind of tam timbre issues that you, you can see. A lot of my students aren't necessarily musicians. They come to me from a standpoint of, I really like producing music and I'm going to be a fantastic producer, rather than um, a grade 8 piano player. So the initial, the initial issues that I have is getting that information into the actual sequencer. One of the, one of the best pieces of software that I've found for this, I mean, it's called noteflight.com. It's online, it's completely free. Your students can sign up and they can, they can use it. It's, it's like Sibelius, but in my opinion, it's just a lot easier. It, it still has import and export functionality, so you can write your scores out um, and then you can export them as MIDI files straight into your sequencer, whether that be Logic or Cubase. So noteflight.com is a really good one if you don't want to use the piano roll to get all the information down. And a lot of my students really struggle if they're using the piano roll. Um, so it's just easier for them to kind of copy, copy the score down note for note. Um, next thing, the editing of timbres. 
I start this with just a blanket timbre. I'll go into the EXS and I'll choose one that kind of matches and then I'll edit it. There's a few trains of thought for this. Some people think, okay, I'm going to just do one track at a time, the whole song, um, and edit that. Other people think, you know, I'm going to do one section of the song and get all the parts down and then edit the timbres and get them as close, to po close as possible. It doesn't really matter. I've found what works for me best is, is if I get a little bit of each part done, get the timbres down for the intro and the verse, and then blank it, blank it out the rest of it and finding the copying bits and all the rest of it. Um, but it, it really doesn't matter whichever approach works best for your students. Um, what else? MIDI shaping. We always lose quite a, few, quite a few marks every year through to the MIDI shaping aspect of the mark scheme. And I'll show you the mark scheme in just a second. What tends to happen, if you input all the notes very mechanically, it comes across that. It comes across being very mechanically mechanical. So it's really important that you go into the part and get your students to use some of the MIDI controllers, be it changing the velocities, changing the note lengths, um, making them swing a little bit just by taking them off the grid ever so slightly. Um, just for those simple three things, you can get you can get a timbre and, a, and an instrument part that sounds more real, more kind of realistic. Okay, let's just move on ever so slightly. We'll come back to pro production techniques in a second, but I want to introduce you to the mark scheme for task 1A. On the left-hand side here of the shot, you're going to see pitch and rhythm. They're worth eight marks each. Um, out of 40 marks, what, what's that? It's almost it's almost 50%, isn't it? So you're looking at a large bulk of the marks just for pitch and rhythm. It's so important. If you as a teacher are not necessarily comfortable with that because you come from a, the productions of things or, or whatever, it's really important. Maybe go and see your head of music and, and get them to check over the student's work or get a second pair of ears just to make sure you're not missing out on some of those pitch marks. In the past, I've, I've lost a few marks where I haven't kind of identified that there was an, an octave phrasing on, on two different instruments and we've missed that out, or there'd, there'd been an insignificant part that, you know, a little grace note that we've missed out. And it's really important that we, you get the pitch and rhythms right. It's a lot of marks to lose. And everything else is weighted at four marks each. So when it comes to pr the production of the piece, you are going to have to focus in on making sure the balance is right, making sure no parts are masked, making sure that the students use panning. And if there's automation anywhere, that needs to be incorporated as well. That's so important. Um, what else can I say about this? I think that kind of brings me to the end of it. If there's any questions at the end, obviously come in and, and, and ask them if I've forgotten anything. That's fine. Like I say, the articulation phrasing is, is definitely one that escapes a lot of my students, especially if they're inputting it via noteflight.com or Sibelius. So making sure you just go through the MIDI controllers and, and tweak some of them. Do a lot of editing as appropriate to the actual track, of course. Okay, so now let's look at task 1B. Unlike task 1A where it was completely MIDI based and it has to be completely MIDI, task 1B is completely audio. You're not allowed to use any MIDI parts here. So if you're recording keyboards, they have to be live keyboards. Um, you're not allowed to do any fancy editing with, with MIDI or VST instruments afterwards. In the early days of this song, I used to let my students choose their own, of this course when I started teaching, sorry, I used to let my students choose their own songs and we'd spend weeks in the studio um, bashing out all these recordings, we'd get a load done and there'd always be some of the students that would be left behind. What I've found in the last three years is I've just I give them the song to do. I, I say, okay, we're going to do Danny California by Red Hot Chili, and everyone can do that. And for the summer task, before you start in term one, you're going to you're going to learn a part on it, and and we're going to bash it out when we get back. And everyone's going to have the same song. This has been so effective, narrowing choice that you, you give your student because they can pretty much choose from any song if they wanted to. But narrowing that choice is going to speed up the workflow. And it's really important, especially in A level music technology. There's a lot to do, and if you you need to speed up the process a little bit, and that was that's one little handy trick that I found that sped it right up. The reason I chose Danny California, apart from having loads and loads of guitar parts and loads and loads of effects that you can apply to all those guitars, is also it's slightly longer than the actual specification that allows, which means the students have to kind of make executive decisions how they're going to to make it fit within the specification. Of I think it's three to five minutes, um, so that that guarantees that every single recording that I do is different. 
it's also really important that your students set up the recording environments. Make sure you give them lots of practice to do that before you head into the recording. Um, I tend to like to get task 1B done as early as possible. What else can I say about this? A question that I often get is, is it okay to use seasoned musicians? The answer to that is absolutely. Um, you can use your students, you can use seasoned musicians. You're not allowed to use professional recording studios. You have to use school's equipment. That's, that's a definite, you have to do that. But you can. And one thing I've done in the past, and, and pretty much every year, is we get a drummer in. And they lay down a solid beat. And after that point, my students do all the other parts. But the benefit of laying down a solid drum beat is that everything's in time, and, and it just makes the overdub so much easier. We have had in the past students do the drumming, and it's always been it, it's not been completely to the metronome, and it, it makes things a little bit harder. So, hiring in a drummer or using using one of your um, staff teachers that plays drums or, or anyone just to lay down a simple groove for for the track can save mountains of time and. It, and you know, obviously it's going to add a lot of presence to the song. Um, what else? Okay, so the mark scheme for this one. You, this is broken up into two areas, recording and mixing. So for mixing, you sorry, for recording, you've got 11 marks. Microphone place, placement and clarity of signal. So making sure that they're controlling the microphone placement, making sure they're tweaking where they put them to get the best possible sound. And then noise and distortion to make sure that there's no kind of weird noises coming from outside or you know there's no clipping from the desk and so on. The rest of the marks all come from how you mix tracks and making sure you manage the EQs, making sure you you're using compression appropriately, not too heavy, not too light. Um, effects and ambience, we always get hit every year for that because we're not we never they, they, my students tend not to get too adventurous with the effects. Good thing about Danny California is they get adventurous with it. You know, you can have f four guitars overlaid, all having different different effects on the guitar. So you hit that every single time. Balance, and then finally stereo fill, making sure you've got some automation going on, making sure everything's panned appropriately in the left and right speakers, and so on. Okay, and that's obviously worth 40 marks as well. Finally, task 1C, the big one. A lot of people, including myself, I always used to leave this till the end. I used to do it very linear. I'd start with A, term 1, B, A, term 2 would be B, and then term 3, C. And then I would always run out of time, and my, my students always kicked me for that. Now I tend to start C as early as I possibly can. Normally, at the end of term 1, beginning of term 2. The reason for this, although it's worth 40 marks, there's an extra 20 marks in the logbook for questions 9 and 10, and how well you explain your choices. Task 1C is an arranging task. It's not a composing task, it's an arranging task. The idea is that you're going to get given a song, you're going to get given a style, you have to take or steal elements from the song and elements from the style. It's really important to stay within the chosen artist of the style. So, for instance, this year they've given you a, oh, I can't remember the other, I think it was House. So if you chose reggae, stay within the artist they've given you, which was Bob Marley, I can't, I can't remember the other two, but one of them was Bob Marley. So if you choose reggae style, list some Bob Marley tracks and, and take some of the aspects from their music. Take take the kind of offbeat groove from it. Take the drum pattern. Um, take some of the kind of syncopated melodies and, and all the rest of it. And then write about it. It's the most important thing. The extra 20 marks are going to be how well you explain how you've taken from the style or how you've taken from the song. Okay. Um, what else? I think I'm, I'm okay there. Okay, so you've got compulsory marks, three sets of compulsory marks. So the use of the stimulus, you're going to get six marks for. So try and take at least six parts from the actual song. So maybe take the melody, maybe take the backing vocals, maybe take the drum beat, maybe take the time signature, or maybe take the tempo um, from the song. So make sure you get at least six parts from that to, to fulfill that one. And then the same for the style. And then the use of technology is weighed in at 10 marks here. So you're going to be a little bit adventurous with the technology, making sure that you kind of maybe use filter effects. The house, the house style would be really good for that, using, using kind of high-pass filters and whatnot, um, and automation effects and things like that. Um, op 
the free optional one, so you're going to get marked for all four. So don't think, oh, I'm just going to focus on melody, or I'm just going to focus on harmony, rhythm, or texture. You're going to get marked on all four of them. I'm sorry, you're gonna, yeah, they're going to mark all four of them, but they're only going to take your highest three, okay? So if you if you chose reggae, you're obviously going to score quite high with rhythm um, and harmony. If you chose house, for instance, you could, you could obviously score quite high for texture, but it's really important that you kind of focus in on all of that and just make sure that um, you've got at least three of those aspects, melody, harmony, rhythm, or texture, that are, that are strong, that are going to get you the full six marks for each area. Okay, finally, the logbook. As I said before, questions 9 and 10 are worth 10 marks each. So question 9 of the logbook is how well you've used the um, song and how well you've described how you've used it. If you go to the page that I've linked here, there's actually some really good examples of of how I've kind of explained how I use the song and whatnot. Question 10 is how well you've used the style and how you can explain the elements that you've taken from the style. Okay, Really important with the logbook, yes, you're going to get marked for questions 9 and 10, but it's really important that you do a really detailed logbook. Do not leave the logbook till the end. Every term you should be doing between one and two logbook sessions with your student. Yeah, this eats into your coursework and exam preparation time, but it's really important that you, you just get a really nice logbook. Start it from day one. There's so much in the logbook that you can fill in straight away, so, so don't leave it. Get on with it. Okay, on to the Q&A. So if anyone's with us, anyone's viewing from the um, musictechstudent.co.uk live page, you'll see that there's a, a call button. And you can actually click on that now. And you can come in and ask whatever questions you want. I'm going to be around, well, until you guys go, really. Um, while you do that, we're just going to have a little look um, at the new specification. So I'm going to, I'm going to see if we can get this OK. No, I don't think that's working. Oh, that's a shame. Okay, well, this week I'm going to post some, some things on the... Ah, it is working. <laughs> Fantastic. So this week I'm going to post some stuff on the actual um, specification and, and we're going to kind of look start looking. I'm going to create a course for task 1A and we've got some scores coming for the 3A, which should help you guys out. But looking for it. So this has just been published today. What have we got? Mostly the same as always. So we've got the free piece of coursework. 20 hours for, for each roughly. or You've got um, 60 hours overall to complete this. So the first one is this song called La 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 featuring Sam Smith, Naughty Boy. Same thing. So it's all MIDI. Not allowed to use audio loops or anything like that. And there you go. You've got the score with it. Uh, task 1B, so if you look, a minimum of 8 audio tracks, must last 2 or 4 minutes, not 5 minutes. Um, must have a minimum tracks recorded by microphone is 4, but actually we do that here, just the drum key on its own takes care of that. Must use, audio, must use overdubs, that's fairly easy. If you're recording a drum kit, obviously record it in isolation, overdub your your vocal over W guitars, that's easy enough. All live musicians. And here's the stimulus, it's probably the bit everyone really wants. Um, so the songs that you can choose from this year, a bit of back, Backstreet Boys, I Want It That Way, or um, The White Stripes, Seven Nation Army, that should be quite a good one. The styles that you can choose from, so this is what I was saying to you earlier, is you choose reggae, you must stick with the suggested um, listening. Bob Marley and the Whale is, is, is obviously, if you're going to do reggae, it's, it's going to be the one that you probably look at first. Um, Toots and the Matals and Burning, Burning Spear. We've, we've done posts on 
music tech student for, for each of those artists. So feel free to have a look at them, have a look at the songs that we suggested. Then for House, if you choose House with maybe Seven Nation Army, that could be quite cool. Um, they've suggested Mars, David Guetta, and Duke Demont. That should be quite interesting. I think House House is going to probably be the popular one this year. And I reckon oh, I'm going to go for Back Boys. When I when I do my tutorial for you guys, I think I'm going to go for Back Boys. That should be quite cool. Okay, and there's a basic score that you can take from. So one of the parts plus the chord sequence has already been done for you. Okay, Seven Nation Army. Okay, and that's the uh, that's the logbook there in a nutshell. If you want to know where to get this from, you can come over to the edexcel.com website. And if you type into Google Edexcel Music Technology, this is the page that comes up. I always find this a bit difficult to get to, but if you click on Question Paper and then scroll all the way to the bottom and click on the four, you'll find it down the bottom here. Where it says new next to it. Um, and that's how I came across it, because it doesn't seem to have updated this yet. Okay, it doesn't look like we've got anyone coming into chat tonight. So I am going to call it a night. I will be back next week. So please feel free. We're going to talk about A2 coursework next week. And hopefully by then we should have maybe one of the scores done. We should have maybe a part of the um, sequence done for our new tutorial sec section. So that should be quite interesting. If you want to get in touch with us in the meantime, you can email us at info Um Newsletter should be coming out fairly soon once I get my act together on that one. Comment on any of, the, any of the posts or join our Facebook, Google and Twitter pages. Thanks very much for coming by and we'll speak soon.